everyone, welcome to another episode of Frag Pro Shooter video. My name is Flag and today I have my 100 subscribers special video. In this video, I will be ranking all the 79 collectible characters in Frag into a tier list. Before I start though, let me explain my tier list. So, as you can see, I have 7 different tiers starting with OP for overpowered at the top. This tier belongs to cards that in my opinion are too strong and unhealthy for the balance of the game. My second tier is S for strong, that is for very good cards that don't necessarily need a nerf right now, but could be nerfed a tiny bit, but I kinda like them where they are right now. The A for above average tier is for cards that are balanced, but legit in the game. B for balanced includes cards that are balanced, but just average in the meta right now. Tier C is for competent, is for balanced cards that are acceptable but at the same time they're not outstanding. We could show them some love by buffing them. D for deficient is for cards that obviously need a buff to be viable throughout the game, but it can still make them work somehow, for example in random draft matches. And at the bottom, we have F for the frustrating tier that shows cards that are terrible and either need a buff or a complete rework. So you can see that I have all the 79 cards here on the screen and starting off, first I'm gonna rank all the defense cards alphabetically. So the first defense card is Baron Voodoo. In my opinion, Baron is not too strong, is not too weak and is just perfectly balanced. He has a good amount of HP, he has a good special ability and a very unique extra ability that is healing himself with every shot that he gets on the opponents and he is certainly viable on the ladder if at a good level. The next defense card on the list is Bubbler. Before Ronin came to Frag, Bubbler was being used a crazy amount at the top of the ladder and mid ladder and his special ability is really really strong, making even the very dangerous cards like Ronin easy to handle. So I'm gonna put him in my S tier. The next defense card on the list is Bat Mama. So basically Bat Mama is a card that when you first start the game, you feel like she's really overpowered, her bots are really really amazing, but after when you climb up the ladder, you realize that she's not actually as strong as you thought she is. That being said, I I don't think she's as bad as some people want to say and in my opinion she's a competent card and she should stay here because you don't want to have cards that are too strong at the start of the game. Next card is Cleo. Cleo is a card that I never fully understood. I know that she was very good about a year ago or nine months ago but right now she's not really that useful and there are way better alternatives than Cleo when it comes to defense. Therefore I'm gonna rank her in my D tier. Next up is DJ Equalizer. Just like Bubbler, he's a card that is really viable and really solid on defense, and especially before running came to the arena, DJ EQ was being used a lot, but when it comes to running, if you miss your super and you cannot target running properly, then he's gonna get one or two shot by the running. And since running is seen all over the ladder, in almost every match above mid-range ladder, DJ EQ isn't as strong as he used to be, but I still think that he's as good as Bubbler, so therefore I'm gonna rank him in my S tier. Next card is Dr. Freeze. Again, Dr. Freeze is a card that I never fully understood and honestly I haven't used him much, I haven't played with him much other than the random draft matches and so on, but I do know that a lot of pros say that he's actually a good card, but again at the same time he's nothing outstanding in my opinion and therefore I think he's just a balanced card. Next defense card is Giga Goo. So if you've seen my ranking of the 20 legendaries in the game, which came out about a month ago or so, in the overall opinion of more than 10 pros, Giga Goo ranked as the worst legendary card in the game right now. His shots are a little bit weird and his super cannot always be useful, so therefore in my opinion Giga Goo ranks in the same tier as Cleo, which is tier D. By the way, I'm considering both the playability of these cards when you are controlling them as a human and also how they react when they are being controlled by AI. So for example, both Bubbler and DJ Equalizer have good AIs because their AI uses their super quite frequently and they are quite on point. Next defense card is Jab. Jab is another card that is actually quite solid on defense, especially if you main him, if you use Jab on defense or throughout the game, he can be really solid, he can be really good. His super is actually quite decent and you can make good counterplays with him. But in this meta with so many offensive cards like Ronin, Fragman and Desperados, his super falls short of bubblers and DJ equalizers in that he cannot stop the opponent's attack cores in place. Therefore, in my opinion, Jab ranks at tier A. The next card is Jackal Padre, another card that you get in the beginning of the game. Up close, Jackal Padre is actually really good, he deals a great amount of damage and his super is actually quite decent, but again, there are way better alternatives than Jackal Padre and therefore, in my opinion, he ranks at tier C. But at the same time, we could also rank him at tier D, but I just feel like he's more useful than Cleo and Gigagoo. 
The next card on the list is the newly buffed Medusa. Medusa got a couple of very very solid buffs and she's certainly viable at higher ladder, you can see even top players, top pros playing her at top 100. Her super is actually quite good and also her AI is decent, so I'm gonna rank her as a TRS card. Next card is Mimi. Mimi is a card that has huge potential in her, her special ability is really creative and if you're playing as Mimi, you can do unbelievable stuff like blocking your bunker and allowing your opponent to get any sort of damage onto your bunkers, but at at the same time there are better cards than Mimi that you would want to control and her AI is actually quite bad in the sense that she doesn't get so many headshots and also sometimes she places the walls somewhere that are completely useless. So in my opinion she belongs to tier C. The next defense card is the TV called OK. Again this is a character that has huge potential especially if you're maining him you can make very good plays with him but overall he doesn't do much damage and his extra ability is actually not known to a lot of people which is if you're attacking a target target with OK and you have a second character on your team that is attacking the same target then that target is gonna take extra damage and also its AI is actually quite bad so in my opinion he belongs to the D tier as in a deficient card. Next up we have Poco Hunter another card that you get when you first start the game she's actually quite viable and balanced you can use her from the beginning of the game even at high ladder she's still used but of course since she's a common card and you can request her a lot she's mostly used at high ladder because she's over leveled but still she's a very very good card on defense and in my opinion she can rank either above average or balanced but I'm gonna settle for balanced. Next is Prisoner 99, another great card on defense which you can use to rush your opponent's bunkers. His super is actually really good and the cooldown is actually quite low and he's certainly as good as Jab, even slightly better than Jab in my opinion but it depends what you want to do with this card but overall I'm gonna put him in my A tier. The newest card added to the game, Queen Unicorn, is certainly a card that is strong in my opinion. She actually belongs above the average cards. I don't believe that she's OP. Her super is actually really strong, but at the same time, it's still manageable, I think. And also, there are people that are saying that she's not good, but I certainly think that she's really strong, and therefore, I'm gonna put her in my S tier. The next card is Slimer, yet another character that you unlock in the first arenas. While if you're being creative with his super, you can do crazy stuff like blocking your bunker from your opponent's attack. He doesn't deal much damage and his AI is actually not that great, uh, especially with the supers. So in my opinion, he belongs to the same tier as Kuyu and the other cards in the deficient tier. The last defense card on the list is the boss. I think everyone agrees that the boss is actually quite strong. I don't even think that anyone would suggest that he belongs to somewhere below the strong tier. When you control him, he's really strong. His shots are strong. His special ability is super strong. His AI does well on defense. And if you can manage to get your boss to your opponent's bunkers, it does massive damage to the bunkers. And so I think he's too strong. His super lasts too long. I would certainly reduce that. And I certainly think that the boss is the best defense card in the game or even the best defense slash camp card in the game and he certainly belongs to the OP tier. Not so surprisingly, he ranked as the second best legendary in the game in my 20 legendaries ranking video. Now that we're done with defense cards, next I'm gonna rank camp cards. Starting the list with Captain Polar, he's certainly a card that seems really overpowered when you first encounter him. You're gonna feel like this is the most unfair card in the game and considering what other cards are available in those lower arenas, it is quite justifiable. But in higher ladder and overall, he's not actually that strong. Actually this meta doesn't leave a lot of space for sniper cards like Captain Polar, Inferno, Vlad and so on, except for one card that is actually really good with sniping, but back to what I was saying. Captain Polar is a very solid card but due to the current maps and current meta I wouldn't rank him higher than an above average card. So Eagle Eye is actually a card you either start playing and liking a lot when you start playing Frag or you choose not to play him and you stick by that for the majority of the time that you climb up the ladder. But if you actually consider his performance in random draft matches, which in my opinion is a great tool to measure how strong the cards are excluding the meta and the meta effect, then he's actually quite good and he can certainly shine in a couple of matches against certain decks. So overall I rank him as a balanced card. The next camp card on the list is Fidelio. I believe Fidelio is the newest camp card added to the game and honestly considering how long ago that was I would say that he should have certainly gotten a buff by now. He's certainly a weak card, he's certainly below average, below balanced so I would certainly suggest a very tiny buff to him. 
The next camp card is Fragenstein, or the correct pronunciation would be Fragenstein. Honestly, I'm not sure why he's a camp card. His range isn't that far, and he's basically a defense card. So Fragenstein's normal attack is actually not that great. Up close, he can deal a huge amount of damage, but he's actually quite slow and it's hard to get close to your target. And his special ability is actually quite useless in my opinion, and I would certainly rework his special ability. But overall, he's not bad to the point that I would say he's completely unplayable, the same way Fidelio is. So I'm gonna drop him in tier D. Next camp card is Genkis. Again, another card that is present from the beginning of the game. Genkis is not too easy to play with. It takes a lot of practice to learn how to shoot with him properly, and also his special ability is actually hard to target. But overall, he holds his own ground, and in my opinion, he belongs to tier C. Next camp card is another sniper, Inferno. Inferno has seen a lot of ups and downs. He used to be really OP a long time ago and then he got nerfed and then he got buffed again in one of the newest balance updates. So in my opinion, he's actually quite viable right now and his AI and special ability are actually quite good. So I'm gonna rank him in the same tier as Captain Polar, which is tier A, above average. JB is the next camp card that you unlock in the beginning of the game. His normal attack is really solid, really good, and also his super is really strong. The radius on his super is actually quite big. And also if you are controlling JB, he can be really detrimental to the game. But that being said, he's not the best option when it comes to camp cards. And therefore for me, he doesn't make his way into the S tier, but rather A tier. But again, he's certainly a card that could also be ranked in the S tier. The next camp card is Longshot, one of the more controversial cards. Right now a lot of people say that he's the worst card in the game, I don't agree with that. Of course he has the lowest HP in the game, but considering his range and the fact that he is available in the lowest arena I think, the first or second arena, I think he's not that bad. But what's missing on him is a lack of an actual special ability. His current special ability is just a zoom ability which isn't used that much, and therefore I'm gonna put him in the D tier. The next camp card in the game is Mechalodon, or rather Mechalodon. I think he certainly leans on the stronger side of the spectrum, so in my opinion he's certainly above balanced, but just like the case with Captain Polar and Inferno, I think that it's just that this meta and the current two maps are not too great for snipers. It's also notable that he has one of the best special abilities to deal with crowd control, but still for me he's not gonna rank higher than above average. The next camp card is Scrapper. So the idea with Scrapper is actually quite awesome. His special ability allows it to repair your bunker, but he doesn't deal much damage and his HP is not that high. So while the potential with him is great, you don't really see him anywhere on the ladder and his AI is actually quite bad. So I'm gonna put him in my deficient tier. I think if they increase the number of his bullets or bulbs per shot from I think three to four, he would certainly be more viable. Next up, we have the newly buffed Shinobi. I'm gonna cut to the chase with this one and say that even before the buff, he was actually quite viable and in my opinion, he was actually quite balanced. But after the buffs, he's become really strong and in my opinion, he's certainly either strong or overpowered. But considering how good his AI is and how crazy strong his special ability is, which slows you down to half speed, in my opinion, Shinobi is the first camp card that ranks overpowered in my tier list. I suggest increasing his special abilities cooldown by a couple of seconds at least, to make him more balanced. The next camp card is the rare Sogeki Chon. This is yet another camp card that doesn't have a good special ability. Her special ability is not really creative and is actually quite slow, but her regular attack is actually quite good. A lot of people that say she's really bad, but in my opinion, in draft matches, she's not as bad as people say. So just like Longshot, I think she belongs to the D tier. Next, we have the epic card, Solartron. So, Solartron is a card that is obviously above average, he's certainly strong, he's really good, and if you ask me what is the sole card that you would never control throughout the match and would let the AI to do the job, I would certainly answer with Solartron. His AI is super good, it uses its special ability as much as it can, sometimes even getting up to 3 kills, and his regular attack deals a huge amount of damage and also has a knockback effect. So, he's certainly overpowered in my books, and just like Shinobi, I think his super is way too frequent and they should increase special abilities cooldown to a longer period. The next camp card is Virus. In my opinion, Virus is the best camp card right now, especially in the pit map. You've probably faced people control Virus on the other side of the arena and just stay next to the stairs and snipe you from the other side of the arena. And unless you have a card like Crystal or Fragman, it can actually get really difficult to get to her and kill her. But she doesn't have a crazy amount of HP or doesn't deal a crazy amount of damage. So in my opinion, she's not OP right now, but she's certainly strong. The last camp card on the list is Vlad. Similar to Captain Polar, when you first go against Vlad, you think that he's really strong. But after you unlock him and play your way up the ladder, you realize that he's not actually that good. Also, his AI is only average, and 90% of the time, special ability is actually quite useless. Therefore, I'm gonna rank him in the same tier as Sogeki-chan, Longshot, and the others in tier D. 
So now that we're done with ranking old camp cards, let's move on to the center cards. 